I mean, we don't usually get to be as loud as we want to be. You can hand us those beers. That'd be sweet. I mean, for me, maybe I worship music. I don't know. Maybe too much sometimes. I mean, I still love music, but I also realize now that there's also other things in life, and there's this fine balance. If I wanna, if I wanna be a musician and, and enjoy music, then I have to also enjoy other things. And it's yeah, you can get too clouded doing one too many, one thing too much, you know. So you gotta try to live it up and you know see what's going on and enjoy it. <laughs> To me, it seems like it's like uh, imminent destruction. It can mean anything to you know, anyone. In, you I know. mean, in like in a bad way, you know, yeah. like here's freaking <laughs> straight in the fucking ground, you know, onward to the wall. But I don't know. I think he has a different view. I of have it a completely. different view. I mean, for when I first sort of we both thought of the the, the title, you know, that we were going to name the EP. That I my instant thought was society's. Um, destroying itself and just going forward until it's like no more that was my instant thought and you know it sounds a little bit like our music you know the same thing apocalyptic feeling of you know but yeah we, we have quite different views on stuff when it comes like that but that's cool <laughs> you know <laughs> what's that yeah it makes it it's like we don't have different views <laughs> no we don't <laughs> Yeah, so we built some stuff, not even specifically just for this record, but I'm just always kind of constantly building things, and so you just put it to use. And then so we did that a lot, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we tried to even build things which you can't build, like excitement and thrill, <laughs> and, um, you know, not physical things, I guess, as well for this record. And so, um, yeah, it was kind of a different experience in that sense, where we're kind of trying to go back in time to that like sort of early moments of your life where you were you know a little bit more just uh feeling the music as opposed to kind of like consciously trying to do something all done in a room about this size <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it <laughs> We weren't even open to having other people work on it. We took it, the album, to possibly get mastered by this guy in Brooklyn. Um, and we took it to the guy. He sat down with it for a while. We're in the room, and he turned to us, and he was like, there's nothing I can do to make it sound better than it already does already. So so, so you just kind of <laughs> do, you know, I've, I've worked even with some other people. And then he and said, if I was you guys, I would burn this. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think between the two of us, too, we know what we want and we know how to do it. Oliver especially is a, he's an amazing master. You know, it's a very specified genre, you know, thing to do. And in my opinion, Oliver's like really good at it, especially for our music. So why go to someone else, you know? with something really loud it's really important to what we're doing because we're playing with um, the sort of interaction between your instrument and the amplifier and that's kind of where the sound sort of comes really alive for us is when you know your speakers are on the verge of blowing up and then it also there's that and then there's this these unpredictable sounds that come out of your guitar when you know you're playing with your amplifier really loud which kind of you know, make the sounds what they are. 
there's also though there's, there's also the, the thing that where it's physical for the crowd you know you can feel it shaking your bones and not many bands do that and that's an interesting experience you know i think that's one of the most euphoric feelings in the world is playing a really good show and when you're really feeling the music and you totally lose your mind and um that's really awesome and such an awesome feeling i've always personally thrived for the live thing i mean i like recording too a lot but Oliver's, I think, a little bit more has an even keel on both those things. No matter what you do, you can't make the most awesome song or sound or something like that. But you can accidentally happen upon it. And so you have to make these things happen. Like, there can be the most awesome sound of you throwing your guitar through the air or something like that. That's when something becomes exciting. Or when, you know, we played this song the other day and Dion broke a string on his bass. And so he had to completely rewrite the song of what he was going to do. Adapt. You know, adapt. And it worked and out better. It worked out better. That was like the yeah. best time we played that song. It was like yeah. that sound. I mean, that's awesome, unpredictable you know? stuff. You know, we, 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 we throw that at ourselves. Like we change the set every night so things you know can't go as you know you can't plan it you know it gets boring and predictable we don't want that it's a fine line right on. cool thank you so much. Thank, you. Awesome. thank you thank you all right